All right, this video I'm starting to build some parts here for the CNC router and starting out by going out in the shop and cutting up some uh, one inch thick tooling plate that I've got there. Now this is a piece of uh, one inch by about 12, a little bit over 12 inches wide there that I'm cutting with that Evolution Rage 3 saw. And um, I have to tell you, it was definitely a challenge cutting it. Um, the blade is actually one of the multi-cut blades it's not made for aluminum so i did have some problems with the teeth filling up and stuff and uh, it did take a long time to cut each piece and i did blow the thermal on it a couple times and had to let it cool down but amazingly enough it uh you know i made a bunch of cuts with it and there you can see what i mean by the uh the aluminum sticking in the blades the teeth would just start filling up with aluminum and I'd have to stop and pry it out with a pair of pliers but you know I pulled a couple chunks out and then just go right back and start cutting again so uh, I really did put this saw to the test and you know, I really didn't think it was going to make it because I had to make six cuts like this and it uh, it did, did a good job so you know it's really a nice nice saw this one's been good and it's uh you can see how hard it's working but there's the first one and you know it's, that's one inch thick plate that it's cutting there so i got the first cut done and then you know i just kept on cutting off the slices that i need to get going on this project and it wasn't a quick thing and the saw did get the uh, motor did get really hot and stuff but no problem in the end so here's one of the plates being cut off. This is the next one. Did nice square cuts and stuff and, you know, nice clean cuts and nothing got really hot or anything. So I was happy with that. And then just kind of like woodworking, you, you start by, you know, roughing things out to size and then you have to go back and start squaring them up and um, flattening them and stuff like that. So. Just going over to the mill now and I'm starting to, to rough, get like one straight edge on them and then flip them over, do the other edge straight. And then the surface of the parts is actually a little bit uh, bowed, they're not perfectly flat. So for the parts I need it flat, I have to go back and just kind of take a couple thousand to cut off each side just to have a nice flat plate to start out with. And this is where it's really nice to have a power feed on your mill. It, you know, makes the job go a lot quicker and easier. And then the, the same thing like wood. You have to go back and square everything up. And I'm just squaring up the end there. And pretty much I've got my first plate ready to go. And then it's time to put holes in. And it's just a matter of starting with the center drill. So you get them located in the right spot. And then you go back with the drill bit later. Now I'm just going to show a couple of the parts being started here. I'm not going to go through all the parts that I machined because it, you know, it just too, took too long. And um, I probably have 100 hours in the parts that I have made so far. And uh, you know, I didn't want to bore everybody to, to death with videos about it. And one of the good things about buying an old machine from somebody is you get a lot of tooling with it. And uh, these are some of the counterboard bits that I got when I bought my milling machine here so um you know that's one thing to look for if you're ever looking for an old machine is find one where there's uh you know you get cutters and tooling and bits and stuff with it but it really does make a difference and can save you a lot of money in the end so then the counter bore for the um these are for the slide mounting holes i just uh put that little tool in there and set the depth stop and you know it only takes a second then now it's time to um, square up and flatten this uh, spindle mount. I bought this spindle mount on Amazon. And, you know, it turns out it wasn't really perfectly, uh, the back surface wasn't parallel to the the bore in it. And it wasn't perfectly flat either. So I just kind of set it up in the middle to get it as, um, as flat and straight as I could there to just go back through and just take a, um, take a couple thousand to cut off the back of it so everything will be you know nice and flat and there you can see I had a lock of spacer in there just to make sure it stayed flat so actually it's a really you know it's a really nice uh, mount it was really worth the money I think and uh, 
then I have to go back to and add some mounting holes because these come without holes. And when I've got it in the machine, I'm going to center drill it and just go back and drill my holes. I'm, I'm putting in uh, provision for 6M8s here. And then once I had that done, the front wasn't quite flat either, so I had to put a counter bore in. And again, you can see, you know, having the right parts and pieces to put together to, to do jobs like this. Uh, and this is all metric hardware that I'm working with too. So, you know, luckily I can use some of these inch things and piece them together. But I got that there, and then I went back and just spot faced the, the holes there so I'd have a nice, you know, flat surface. And... Uh, there you can see that one's all cleaned up and ready to go and then I started on the next plate um, this one is for the Z and uh, same thing I just start by center drilling the holes and here I'm putting the M8s in for the spindle mount and I'm putting a whole series of them in and then the worst part that takes the most time is going back and tapping everything so um, you know it's not bad and, and there you can see that plate's just about done is all roughed out and uh, ready to go inside and try. So here I am just doing the first uh, first assembly to make sure that you know things do go together there. You can see I've got the couple pairs of slides on and um, I didn't go through putting all this hardware in and stuff because you know pretty much it's a self-explanatory I think. And you know I got the a lot of hard work, you know, lots of screws. There must be 500 screws and putting this thing together. It's unbelievable. So I'm just going to snug everything down and try to get it lined up good. And then I'm going to put this front Z plate on there now. When I machine this, I actually left uh, two surfaces five thousandths higher. I'll show you in a second, just so I could uh, fit the lead screw later. Because I didn't really trust the dimensions on that. The, um, I didn't know if the one that I had actually matched the, the dimension sheet that I found. So I'm just going to start putting things together loosely here and um, get the bearing thing. And then there's the, uh, that lead screw nut there. And I'm just going to put a couple of screws in loosely to, to hold in place. And you can see it's um, it's, a, it's fairly stout. This, this is going to be a... Um, you know, the gantry, I think, in the end is going to be probably about 250 pounds from the weight of all the parts here. So, getting the uh, the hardware in there and, you know, just so much so much hardware to, to assemble with something like this. Because each of these little blocks has four M5 screws in there and lock washers and stuff like that. And then once I got it in there, I ran it up and down to make sure everything was smooth uh, before I really tightened up the, the final bolts on those uh, slide pieces in the back plate there. And then I um, was able to get a final nice. number on the uh, clearance for the lead screw. So I can get a... I loosened up the screws holding it in place and I just let it float out a little bit and I can get a feeler gauge in there to um, to double check that you know what the number was and I did wind up having to machine uh, five thousandths off each of those surfaces that I left on there so the original numbers were right but you know it pays to be safe when you you've got a bunch of hours in a part like this and I'm just gonna put the spindle in there just to make sure everything fits and be able to check it for squareness and um, verticalness and stuff and and you really do have to crank down on that pretty good. Now, this isn't the exact location it's going in, but um, I'm just uh, just throwing it in place now so I can uh, just verify everything's going to fit. And uh, you can see I've got the, the cooling tubes and stuff there. I'm starting to route. And I did wind up buying a dust hood for it. Uh, I bought this on Amazon. I'll, I'll put some links to this stuff in the next video when I get it all together. But I was going to 3D print one, but by the time I um, took and drew it up and printed it and everything, it would have uh, cost more than what I paid for it. 
And then here's a couple of the side riser plates that I, I went out and machined up. And you can see they kind of lock into that top extrusion and they're going to ride on top of the bearings there to hold everything in place. Now I had to uh, pull the end cap off and let all the water out of it just so that I could uh, slide in some uh, some of those T-nuts into the extrusion there. So the easiest way I found out was uh, I can just pump it all out. I just start to pump up and put the hose in the jug, pull the return line out of the fitting. It just pops right out, put it in the jug and takes a, you know, it takes a minute or two to, to fill up the jug, but you know, it's the easiest way with no mess to get it all cleaned out. And I went out and machined the um, base blocks for the sides. And there you see how that all goes together. So now I'm just going to do a test fit of these parts too. There's, there's still more machining to be done on them and a couple more features to be added. But uh, right now I just want to make sure I've got the elevations correct for my clearances and for the spindle. And that everything, all my mounting holes line up with the extrusion and stuff like that. So you can see nothing's really finished or anything yet. I'm just uh, just putting it together before I uh, do the final assembly and final machining. I mean, and then final assembly. And I'm I'm really amazed these low cost slides how nice they are and how smooth they are and how tight they are. It's just really um, I don't know if I got lucky or what, but uh, all the slides I got are good once they replace that one uh, one that was too wide. And the screws all feel great too. So now I'm starting to do a little bit of final assembly here. You can see I took that plate and I, uh, once I knew everything was right, I went in and I put a thin coat of a flat black paint on it there just to, to cover it up a little bit. And it's starting to do the final assembly. And then I had to machine a couple brackets for the uh, lead screw mounts here. And these screws are extremely smooth and um, zero backlash. I'm pretty amazed about that too. And then it's time to start putting the Z plate on the front there. I just kind of put all these things together loosely until I get everything aligned and uh, properly sliding. And then I'll go back and tighten everything up good and you can do see can see there that I did get a um a good couple of those dri uh, ball drivers to make it a lot easier to put things together and then it's time to put the, the screw on there for the Z and I did machine that plate so everything is perfect now So that all that all goes together nice and um these all three of these screws are that I've got so far are really nice and smooth. And I did add a cable piece of that cable chain up on the top there for all my uh water tubing and wires and stuff and uh pretty much there you can see the spindle assembly together. That's all the Z assembly is pretty much done now. And the only thing left was I needed to uh, I needed a bracket to hold the uh, optical sensors that I'm using for the uh, limits and home switches. So I took, went out to any cubic Chiron and decided to try to 3, 3D print one that was uh, about 8 inches tall there. And uh, you can see I'm using that uh, grow tent for the 3D printer to keep it warm. But that works good. And um, I will be starting some lettuce in there soon too though. But I I messed up when I sliced it, and it wound up taking 10 hours to print this thing. But it did come out good, and uh, it worked in the end, so I'm happy. It allows me to adjust my sensors. And then I decided to go with the Maso um, controller on this. So I'm printing, printing out a 400-page manual right now with that Epson printer there, that ink tank one. That's nice. And here are the, the two the side plates here. They're uh, all done, ready to go together. And there's my uh, lead screw adapters for the uh, X screws. And they go right in the side plates. It all locks together and um, fits together nice. So here we are. I'm going to just do the, the final assembly now. Get this uh, gantry uh, properly mounted and lined up and squared up now. 
just screws on the bearings there and then slides in place like that. And I did have to do a little bit of squaring up and stuff. And um, first I started, there's uh, M8 screws or six screws that lock it into that extrusion there. So I had to start them. And uh, then once I got that done, I went back and made sure everything was all squared up perfectly. And, uh, you know, snugged it down nice and tight so it won't move anywhere. And then I wound up making a uh, little bracket for the servo motor. You can see I'm going with a timing belt drive on that motor there. And um, all the cooling lines look good and stuff. And, you know, I've got them all routed through the those plates and stuff. And there's my pump. And I did put a screen filter on the inside, on the front side of it there. Got the cable chain all mounted up there to the top, you can see. And pretty much at a Z assembly is done and I do have a flow meter on there now for the spindle and I do have a temperature gauge and I did run it for a while and it looks like this thing is going to work perfect um I didn't see much of a temperature rise after an hour so that was no load and you know they say you can go up to about 85 degrees with these so I shouldn't have a problem whatsoever and there's a cable chain and I've got most of the wiring started and see that bracket that I 3D printed and there's uh, three optical switches in there. I'm going to have to uh, boost the voltage on them though because I decided to go with the Maso controller now and it needs over 5 volts and these only put out 3.5 when they're on the high state. But you know some minor things to work out once I get it. And all the you know the wiring is all started and you know pretty much I've got the um the one lead screw on this side and there'll be another screw on the other side that I have on order now I wanted to you know just see what they look like before I ordered more and still have some end plates to make stuff like that you know some little parts to clean up and I just thought I'd show you you know moving it a little I'm just taking it and uh, throwing 20 volts to that servo motor and just uh, you know trying to see how smooth everything moves and it's really super tight and uh, you know, it does move good. And once I get that running under the controller, it should, I think it'll be um, nice and fast um, and powerful. We'll find out. But everything on that part, the X and the Z, you know, pretty much is done. And I'm just working, or the Y and the Z, I mean, and I'm just working out the X now. You can see i you know, I'm just moving it a little bit with the, with the screw using the drill there. And uh, this, this screw do have a little bit, that one there has a little bit of a bow in it that I'm going to have to try to work out of it. Because when you get it moving really fast, it does whip a little bit. But And I did print out the 400 pages of that Maso manual, so I'll be reading that. I'm waiting for the unit to, it's shipped from Australia and it should be here within 10 days, I think. So, you know, then I can get doing the major wiring and actually have it move under its own power. But I just thought I'd do an update, you know, where I sit right now, and um, it's uh, it's moving along slowly but surely. This part really does take a lot of time, it's just many hours, you know, when you're doing metal work and then trying to do precision work and um, square everything up and tap everything and stuff. So, you know, this is the slow part, but I thought I'd just give you an idea of exactly, you know, how I was going about doing this. And hopefully the uh, next video I'll start getting into um, some info about that mass hole controller and stuff. Because that's a really interesting looking unit. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.